Hello, what's up, YouTube photographer Ronnie Sutton? I in this tutorial, I want to show the additional things I do after doing my frequency separation or after doing my skin retouching in Photoshop. So these things are just basically going to make your portraits better after you have done the skin retouching. Remember, skin retouching is not the end of making a beautiful image. So you have to go an extra mile to make the photo beautiful. And in this tutorial, I want to show you my simple techniques or the simple tools I tend to use when it comes to adding more beauty to the images I post on social media or the images I deliver to my clients. So the very first thing I do after making or doing my frequency separation skin retouching, so this is the image before and after. So the very first thing I tend to do when it comes to making the images better is first of all creating a stamp visible layer. So I'm just going to show that in a bit. So in order to create a stamp visible layer, simply press shift alternate control e on the keyboard then if at all you're using mac you can simply press shift option command e on the keyboard so after creating a stamp visible layer we are going to simply come to filter and you're going to come to the camera row filter so after coming to camera row filter first of all i always want to add rich contrast to my images you can see that it was a little bit pale so instead of going to photoshop and simply dragging up the contrast slider what i tend to do i want to only target the skin tones and make the skin look a little bit richer regarding the contrast so with that i simply come to my color mixer panel in the camera row filter so what i do i'll just come to my luminance remember luminance is the brightness or darkness of a given color so I'm just going to come to the oranges. I know that add contrast to skin tone only. I'll just come to the orange slider and simply darken it. So you can see you shouldn't take it all the way down. Just add a simple bit of darkening. So by by dragging the orange slider towards the left hand side, we are simply adding contrast to the skin tone. And just see what that has done. You can see how better and more compose the skin tone is going to be so after we have done this anything is going to be adding some kind of pop to the sky so this is going to be more of a personal preference so in order to add that kind of pop you can see that we have blows in the sky so I'll just come to the saturation panel and simply target the blows in this image so by coming to the blows i'll just take that up but you shouldn't take it all the up because you're going to be having this kind of fringing around the edges. So just add a little bit of the saturation to make it look a little bit natural. Then you're going to come to the luminous once again and simply take the blue slider down to darken the sky a little bit so that it can pop alongside the image. So just see what this has done to the image. So this is the before, after, before, after. So after you have done that, we are going to open the image back to Photoshop to add other adjustments or final touches to make the image look a little bit better. So right now, after you have done this, the next thing is going to be handling more of the skin tone. So in order to make the skin look richer, you're going to come and create a black and white adjustment layer in Photoshop and simply change the blend mode to multiply and come to the opacity and simply reduce the opacity all the way to around four four looks okay and you can see what this has done that's the before after it is just subtle but it has a contribution it makes to the image so after you have done that the next thing is going to be simply coming down here and first of all we want to handle the colors because this was more of a maroon kind of outfit so just want to color correct specific areas or colors within the photo itself so in order to do that color correction, we are going to come to our selective color adjustment layer right here and simply target the magentas. So just going to come right here and simply target the magentas because this is more of a magenta outfit. And by simply coming to the black slider, you can darken or brighten this outfit. You can see by taking up the black slider, we're adding more blacks into the magentas which is going to be making the outfit darker. So depending on the outfit that you're working with in your image, you can simply play around with the slider 
to darken or brighten it depending on what you are seeing when you are shooting the image. So if at all the model was putting on a white outfit and maybe that outfit was having that kind of yellow tint on it, you come to the white outfit, so you come to the color of the outfit which is the white and you can simply come to the color cast that you're having in that outfit. So if I told you you're having a yellow color cast, you can simply remove the yellows from that color by simply dragging, coming the yellow slider under the white and simply dragging it out and that is going to make the outfit a little bit more on the white side by eliminating the yellow so that is how you can color correct given areas in the image so i'll just come to the blacks next under selective color so you can easily enhance the blacks or even the hair itself so if i told the hair was having a little bit of that kind of bluish kind of feel to it by tacking up the yellow slider I remember opposite of blue is yellow so by taking up the yellow slider we're going to be introducing you can see you can either increase the blues or you can eliminate the blues by taking up the yellow slider to introduce more yellows in that area that may be having yellows within the blacks of the image so after you have done this you can see the before and after for just the selective color adjustment layer so after you have done this the next thing is going to be simply doing a little bit of eye whitening to this image so we're going to come and do some eye whitening so in order to do the eye whitening you're going to come to the adjustment layer and simply come to hue and saturation and under this simply make sure you are in master and you can come to the saturation and simply desaturate the overall image up to around negative 67 it is okay like that so you can set the image is going to be desaturated to some extent but the eyes are going to be looking a little bit naturally white but this is affecting the overall image so what we want to do we're just going to close this and select the white layer mask and simply press ctrl i on the keyboard to invert the effect so if at all using mac you can simply press command i to invert the effect and simply come under the brushes get the normal brush tool and make sure you set it right the hardness is zero and soft round brush is selected the mode is normal opacity and the flat 100% smoothing at zero. So you have to make sure you have black and white on these two color swatches. Or you can switch between those. Or if at all you have any other color, you can simply left click on the tiny boxes to reset it to black and white. Then you can switch between between black and white by using X on the keyboard. You can simply use this arrow. Remember in Photoshop, white is going to reveal and black is going to hide. That is why the desaturated layer has been hidden behind the black mask so in order to reveal it we simply have to come and paint using a white brush so we have gotten our brush tool so in order to do the whitening of the eyes and teeth we are simply going to come to this and reduce on the size of the brush by using the bracket keys on the keyboard and simply left click and hold down and just paint over the eyes to add this kind of natural eye whitening effect so you shouldn't paint on this corner because that is going to make the eye look unnatural. So just paint on the teeth and you have to be careful not to paint over the gum. So if I told you make a mistake, for example, you can simply press X on the keyboard to get black on top and simply eliminate the extras. If I told you have over painted in a given area. So if I told you comfortable with this, you can stop right here or you can simply come to the opacity and simply reduce on the opacity if at all you have over whitened the eyes and teeth so the next thing that we are going to do for this case is simply adding some glow if at all you don't have the glow but for my image i had the glow so in order to add glow to your image you can simply come to the adjustments and simply come to the curves adjustment layer then simply come to the brightest point right here and drag it up until when the image is getting brighter and close this so after doing that simply double click on this layer to open up the layer style dialog box right here and you can eliminate the brightening from the shadow areas by simply left clicking and dragging this away from the shadow areas so we are on underlying layer make sure blend if is set to gray so by dragging this underlying layer slider it can only affect the brightest areas or the highlights of the image. 
and you can refine this so when you search is affecting only the highlights you can refine it by holding down the option key on the keyboard or the alternate key on the keyboard then you can split this to refine that and you can see that it introduces a natural kind of shine to the image and you can press ok but this is also affecting the sky of the image so you only want it on the skin so press the white select the white layer mask and press ctrl i then for mark it, it is command i to invert the effect and get the brush tool make sure it is white white as a foreground color and you can only paint on the areas that you want to have that kind of glow so you can start we are introducing a glow to the image or to the brightest areas of the image so you can see this is going to make the image even look better so after you have done that and you're comfortable with the effect so you can say before and after so if i thought it is too much you can come the opacity and reduce it the one of your liking so after this let's do a little bit of fixing of this area right here so we are going to create the last stamp visible layer by pressing shift alternate command e on the keyboard create a stamp visible layer so these are more of final touches that are going to make the images better or stand out so after creating a stamp visible layer, we are going to come to filter and we are going to come to the liquify filter so just want to fix this area right here so the liquify filter is very powerful when it comes to fixing or reducing big areas because it makes the whole image liquid and you can easily push it and transform it to what you want it to be or specific areas you can easily transform those areas to what uh, you want them to be in photoshop so just going to come the liquify filter and with this forward warp tool you're going to make sure the pressure is medium because you don't want it to be too much and the density is 30 so with this done we are going to come and increase on the side by using the bracket keys on the keyboard and you're going to simply just push in that a little bit so you have to be careful when you're doing this you don't want to go overboard with this so just fix that a little bit by pushing so i'm basically left clicking and holding down and dragging in to push it in that direction so that it can look a little bit better so you can see the before after before after and i'll simply come and press ok so basically this is what i tend to do to spice up or make the images better in photoshop after doing skin retouching so let me first of all group all this and i show you what we have been able to achieve by just these simple steps in photoshop so this is the image before after before after just see how better and how more vibrant it has gotten to be after doing these final steps so this is what i do and if i told you add these two images i promise that they're going to be better and they're going to also stand out so this is it for this video and if i told you you have learned a thing or two from this video don't forget to like this video and don't forget to subscribe this channel if at all you have been watching and you're not subscribed to this channel ronix from Ronix photography thank you for watching i'll see you in yet more amazing tutorials and don't forget to keep practicing and also keep creating